Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Multifamily Legacy Podcast. We have got a spectacular show today. Um, I have one of my good friends. And, and guys, this guy is amazing. He was there. He was actually in my ear when I first started my real estate career uh, as I was trying to learn how to wholesale and how to like, uh, he had a, a series that he did with his brother called Do or Die, 90 Days <laughs> Do or Die. And I will never forget it because it was just an amazing experience to listen to his journey and his fears and his struggles. He is the wholesale king, in my opinion, um, and he teaches it like no other. Um, let me introduce you to my good friend, my buddy, Tom Kroll. What's up, buddy? Bam, Corey. It's so good to be with you here today, man. Thank you for having me on the show. It's awesome. Yeah, dude. You know, I think about like, um, you know, wholesaling. So I know I got a multifamily show, but listen, we both talked about when we first started before we hit the record button of right. the, the first thing of any good deal is how to find a good one. Yep. Right. That's wholesaling. Absolutely. That's the key. The, the key, I don't care what you do. I, wholesaling has nothing to do. This is such a common mistake is people make this mistake. They say, oh, you know, wholesaling, you're assigning contracts. No, wholesaling is the art of consistently finding discounted deals, whether they're multifamily deals, apartment buildings, single family, townhomes, duplexes, land. It doesn't matter. If you can get good at finding discounted properties, which is the beginning of every good deal, you will become a multi-millionaire in a very short amount of time. I love it. <laughs> I love it, TD. It's awesome. It's, it's so, so great. Well, because it's funny, right? Because I mean, I a lot of people start off wholesaling and, and really think about this. I, I start off with wholesaling because I looked at it like, Corey, what do you have? I'm like, well, um, I barely got to make it out of high school. Um, I'm not that smart. Like, I don't have a degree. All the things are stacked, but I'm like, but can I... Do I have a lot of hustle in me? Yes. Right. right. And a lot of times that's what it takes in, in, in the wholesale business. That's all it is. Wholesaling, the best way to think about wholesaling. Is, and by the way, I'm with you 110%. I barely squeaked out of, of, of high school, barely. And I got a 990 on my SAT. I, as soon as Julie and I met, we had Logan, which got us kicked right out of Christian college. So we got started right away. I was totally broke. So if I could do this, anybody could do this. And really, when you think about uh, wholesaling, a, a lot of people, they get, they, they think that wholesaling, it's very complicated. But the thing about wholesaling is it's very easy. The, the best way to think about it is it's a pawn shop. That's exactly what it is. People get, they take too involved with the real estate and the, the square footage and the price of a countertop. And a, I don't know anything. I, and I want to say this loud and clear. I do not know anything about real estate. These people who, like, I have a guy, just so you know, I have very high ceilings in my house. Julie and I have a guy who legitimately comes to change the light bulbs. I don't know the first thing about real estate. So the good thing about wholesaling is you don't have to, you just have to get really good. You know, people will say, well, how do you know what the price of a home is? I've never understood this question. There's so many websites that will tell you how much a home costs. They're like yeah. measuring, you know, like what's the ARV? I'm like, I don't know what ARV stands for, but I just, just put the house on the contract and that's it. I don't want to hear it. So uh, I always, just so you know, ARV, I always say people are like, you know, they'll say, well, you know, I took a look at the ARV and I'm like, what does ARV stand for? And they go, uh, after repair value, I go, no, ARV stands for assumptions, reduce victories. Nobody cares what you think the price of the home is. You think some cash buyer is going to be like, oh, well, Tom says the home is worth X, so I'll pay more. It's like, no, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So we got to <laughs> cut through all the fat, find good deals. That's it. Isn't that so funny, right? I mean, you were cut from the same cloth, by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, when you start from nothing, um, and really, like, I was never the sharpest tool in the shed, right? I mean, I, th I think you're the same way, right? Like, Oh, but, yeah. And my banker, thank God, thank God, my banker has never asked me for my report card. Right. <laughs> Bro, I don't even know. Yeah, I would be in trouble. If this, <laughs> yeah, this, it's, it's so funny because my sister, when we were growing up, she was always a straight A student, you know, now... Uh, then she became a teacher. Then she got like this degree. And then there was another degree on top and then another degree on top. And she ended up becoming a principal. And she called me up. She lives in uh, Baltimore. And she called me up and she said, oh, you know, Tom, she's like, it's so boring. And that I want to do something else. 
And I said, let's do it. Hands down, the most difficult student I've ever had in my whole life, I will tell you right now, but she did it. Tracy just did her first deal. Bam, she just did it. She made $8,000 on her first deal. It was oh, incredible. yeah. Man, I loved it. But yeah, so anybody could do it as long as you have focus, simple instruction, clarity. You, the best way to describe wholesaling, if you really want to learn it in three seconds, is when you go to sell a home or a multifamily building or whatever you sell, there are three things that you get to choose from. Speed, price, and convenience. That's it. And you can only have two at the sacrifice of the one. So all of our, every single deal, and I've done now hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of deals, all of those deals, what the common thread, the commonality was they wanted it fast. They wanted fast cash and they wanted it convenient. Mobile notaries don't come in, all that stuff. Yep. And they were willing to bring price to the table. So if you can figure that out on just say, hey, listen, the service I provide as a wholesaler is speed and convenience in exchange for price, exactly like a pawn shop. Your life will be simple. You'll be a deal finder instead of a deal creator. Your life will be easy. You'll have more money than you'll know that you could even spend. It's, it's beautiful. I, I love wholesaling. I'll be a wholesaler for the rest of my life. I love it. It's so great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, it's so great. now... But so what's funny, let's talk about when you first started, right? Oh, man. Um, because I remember listening to those audio tracks and um, I, I hear this confident Tom now. Right. right? <laughs> 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 but it wasn't always so. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> yeah. So when I first started, my, my stepbrother, who you also are friends with, uh, Todd Toback. So Todd and I became brothers when we were about five and four or four and three or something like that. He's about six months older than me. And um, I, I was a lawn care guy in South Florida. Um, as uh, Corey and I were talking about right before we started recording, I definitely do not have the body type to be a lawn care guy in Florida. <laughs> I can tell you right now. Like I wasn't that guy like with my shirt off. Like I was not, <laughs> that was not me. So I was a lawn care guy. Um, I ended up getting fired uh, from, I then moved into like selling lawn care. I didn't sell anything. So I, they fired me. And um, I called Todd Toback, my stepbrother. I said, Todd, you know, help me put my resume together. What should I do? And he's like, stop being such a blankety blankety blank and go in wholesale. And I, at that time, first of all, I knew nothing about real estate. And I oh, said, yeah. yeah, like zero. And I still really don't know too much about real estate. And he said, um, I said, oh, you know, I was, you know, well, I don't have any money and San Diego is so big and the houses are so much. And I live in this little town in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Port blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. I mean, now I love it. All the palm trees, but yeah, I mean, it was a nightmare. He pulled me through kicking and screaming and whining the whole time. I had no confidence. Um, my first mailing, I totally messed up because I forgot to put last market sale date on the criteria. So it was a complete crap show, but thank God for Todd Toback, my stepbrother, because, oh man, that was, he pulled, I had, I don't know what to say. So except Here's like, my version of that, right? Story, right? Yeah, yeah. So, Cause I listened to it and I followed you. I was like, wow. And what I saw was someone, and, and this is typical, right? Uh, most people, they come, uh, listen, you can lead a horse to water, but sometimes you can't make a drink, but he's right. basically forcing you to drink, right? Yes. Which is the way, most of us have to do it sometimes. Like someone, yep. the, the reason we pay for coaching is to have someone push you. Right? Yes. Yes. And say, and hold you accountable to yes. doing the step. Right. Yep. I mean, well, coaching is a whole different aspect. We, there's a lot of guys that do it wrong. But yes. Like at the end of the day, it's just like, listen, the goal today is step this until you do that. You can't go any farther. Yep. Right. I love it. You're talking my language, brother. We are definitely come from the same cloth because I totally agree with that. I mean, like, what's the point, right? Because then you're just, you're wasting like, hey, listen, forget about that over there because we still need to go through the step right here, brother. Right. Oh man, I'm, I'm telling you just as a side note on coaching, you know, that's why we have people who come to our program and they'll say, you know, I spent like 50,000, 125,000 and they get all this information, but it's not an information problem. You're solving it the world. never wrong. is. Yeah. The information is not the problem. If, if it was information, that would be, you know, so, that, you know, if you, if, if a coach 
loves their students. You can't just bring the horse to water. You gotta, if you loved that horse, you would cup your hands and you would bring the water to the horse's mouth. And that's what Todd did with me. Drink. Yes. Yeah. And, I, so, and I, I what totally I watched agree. and what I watched was I watched you gain confidence. And yeah. that was for me very inspiring. Awesome. Right? To awesome. See and to hear you to know what I I mean, I know what you've done since then and what you have now. And you have an amazing following. You have an amazing company. You've taught and trained I'm gonna say hundreds of thousands thousands of people i'm not exactly your number i don't know your numbers yeah, not not hundreds of thousands but yeah definitely thousands, thousands of people <laughs> the art of wholesaling and they've yeah. been successful and th and there's a difference between having students and successful students i totally right? agree i totally I, I always tell my my potential students i say go out if you can find a coaching program with more reviews than my program I don't care what they're teaching, join it, join that program because that every single day, and I'm not like, but I will tell you, Corey, this is, I wake up every single day and we say, the only measure of success is our students. How many deals are our students doing? That's the only number I care about. I don't care about any other margin. I want to know, and, and, I, and I'm not like, you know, we're not here to talk about the coaching program, but I, right. as a coach to a coach, I will tell you that that's, man, that is so key and such a differentiator between what's out there. You know, a lot of coaches, it's, I have information, now I package it and I sell it. Th that's not coaching. That's right. not coaching. You know, coaching is you got to get your students results. And, you know, wholesaling is, it, it's great to be a coach in wholesaling because it's so easy. There's right. nothing complicated. There's not about lots wholesaling. of steps there. There's not really lots of steps. <laughs> no steps. Right. <laughs> Don't find somebody who wants to sell at a discount. You're going to get a ton of no's before you get a yes. There's my whole program. You don't, save your money. <laughs> It's crazy, man. But it's such a, it's such, you know, I just got right before I usually meet with my personal assistant, Stephanie on Thursdays at 10 o'clock, but we had a hiccup this Thursday. So she just met with me. I mean, the amount of revenue that, that we wholesale, you know, as, that I wholesale my own wholesaling business. It's, it's so crazy. Like, like a bad week. It's like, like my whole annual salary. But like, it's crazy, man. I love this business. Wholesaling is the greatest. It, you know, it really, it, all those books behind me, when you, when you really read them, you know, these, these guys and all these authors about real estate, just start with the discounted property. If you mess up everything else, you are going to be fine. If you're paying 40, 50 and 60 cents on the dollar, you could be the dumbest guy in the room and the wealthiest. If you start with a cheap discounted property. Absolutely. Every time, right? Yeah. My first apartment deal, the reason I won and I, I made a lot of mistakes, but the reason I won is because I found a great deal. Brother, that deal, by the way, let me just tell you, here you go. This is the victory bell. Yeah. <laughs> That deal is legendary. <laughs> I am serious, you guys. Like everyone's like, Corey Peterson, did you hear about his first deal? No, what was it? Like that's how every conversation <laughs> talk starts about Corey Peterson is like, did you hear about that deal that he did his first deal? It's like, oh man, that's awesome. You know, what's funny, <laughs> what's funny is I went back and forth. So I've only posted like my real HUD on one website, right? On a, okay. on a closed group, Collective Genius. It's the right. only one that I've ever shared it with. Like, cause I, I don't like to, and I've talked about it. Right. But, um, I've only shared, like, I usually don't post money. Right. Right. But, um, so, but that one I posted my HUD, right. right. So I want to just kind of like, you know, Hey, let me just show you what I did. Right. That's and, awesome. um, <laughs> I went back and forth with my wife. I go, honey, what do you think? Should I, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I? <laughs> and finally I was like, screw it. I'm just going to do it. I hit the. The, the send button or whatever. And, um, and it was funny, the response, cause they're like, Oh, whoa, 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 right. whoa. what's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it that was funny great deal. how much respect I got after that. Right? Oh yeah. 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 You know, no, I hey, this is our, Hey, I already, cause I already know who you are. Like I, if you're like me and I know you are, um, no one ever sees this coming. Right. Right. I mean, listen, I, Oh, Corey's an overnight success. What they didn't see is me working right. to, 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 you know, and all of a sudden it shows up. 
right? Yeah. That and, and um, yeah. And that's true for students. You have to like we always are constantly battling that as you know, it's it's they see all these big checks. You know, we just posted one of our students made a, he just started, he made 127,000 in in assignments in one in November, right? The guy just started, he's great. His name is Joseph and uh, we just posted it on my Facebook page. And you know, the first question we get well, how long did it take you? Well, you know, it took, it's, it's, it's hours of work. It's hours of grinding it out and, and grit and perseverance, determination. Yeah. You know, where what we lack in smarts and book smarts, you make up for in sweat equity. I really, you oh, know. Man, without a doubt, right? That's yeah. always been my biggest, like, I was always willing to put in the work, right? Yeah. I never oh, said, yeah. oh, I'm too good. Or like, uh, you know, I was always, and I've always been willing to put in the work. Right, brother Rachel Ray, man, that's how she did it. I'm, I will. Uh, you might be, you know, get a better test grade, but I will outwork you. I'll be there earlier. I'll stay later. I'll skip lunch. I don't care. I don't know if I'll skip lunch anymore, but I. Used to. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the, that is the secret to everything. You can outwork, um, you know, work hard because nobody else does. That's that's the secret. No, nah, without a doubt, without a doubt. So uh, just bring me up to speed because. I- I don't even know. My listeners don't probably don't know exactly who you are. Um, so, but just give them a little rewind of yeah. give me your success points, bro. Yeah. You, so, I mean, I, it's, so uh, it's really simple. I was, I was in Florida. I was a lawn care guy, got fired. My brother, Todd, uh, he got me into this little niche of real estate called wholesaling houses. I, I was doing, I, we were focused on single family, uh, had right out of the gate, and the secret with this is it was all instruction. This is where I learned the Mr. Miyagi Danielson approach. You know, Todd was basically like, hey, I don't care what you think you know about wholesaling. I don't care what you want to know. I'm going to tell you what to do and how to do it. And you're going to do it. And your results are going to be your education. Said, not send me. the floor. That, yeah, exactly. Send the floor. Right. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> wax up, up. Wax up. Down. Hate the <laughs> Always look <laughs> high. Right. <laughs> It's true, man. That is the secret, the instruction model. And the result is the secret. Everybody's like learning, <laughs> learning, learning. And you know, the problem with education is you feel like you're, you're moving, but you're on a treadmill. Like you've got cancer. It's cancer. It's a number one reason new students fail in, in real estate, in any in area, area, area of real estate, I believe is education. You got to have a mentor that you just, they tell you what to do. You follow the instruction and you learn by making mistakes. Um, but yeah, so I started and then um, started doing a lot of deals right out of the gate. Um, and then I started to have people ask me like, hey, how are you doing this? And I would say, hey, you know, pay me 300 bucks and I'll tell you how to do it. And it was great. And then we just started growing the tribe and the students. I read a book um, early on from uh, my friend, Sean Alex, uh, uh, by Sean. I'm sorry. It was by um, uh, Rhinoceros Success is by Scott Alexander. It was recommended to me by Sean Terry. And uh, I read that book, one of the greatest business books of all time. And uh, I, I read it and I literally just said, we are going to build a community around this book, uh, just a tribe of people. And we started talking about the principles of that book. Um, I will tell everybody who's listening right now, I attribute the majority of my success to tithing. Um, you tie to work 10% of every dollar you earn goes directly back to God. It's not yours. There's a difference between charity and tithing. Tithing, the money does not belong to you. You're not a charitable guy if you put 20 bucks into the bucket. It's you owe that money to God, 10%, no exceptions. I will tell you that's, I think, the secret. But um, yeah, it just started to grow from there. And then really now I'm like the low man on the totem pole. I mean, we have people who come in, I mean, just phenomenal success. I mean, success that is just mind blowing success. I cannot even tell you people like single mom, two kids, two jobs, $900,000 our first year. I'm like, like what, what, what Oh that? man. It's crazy, man. We have like all kinds of, you know, good stuff happening. That's changing lives too. I mean, it's like changing lives, man. Listen that, I mean, at the end of the day, and I have this philosophy, the reason I started to educate coming on a podcast was to give back, right? Is to right. show, listen, here's my, here's my record. Here's what I've done. And here's what I've learned. Right. And like, right. and, and here it all is like, I try to be as unfiltered as possible because I believe it in reality. Right. Right. Not made for TV, but like the real stuff. Oh, the I don't know. Yeah, right? yeah. Let me show you how I, you know, failed and, and like, you know, looked stupid and lost right. money and made some mistakes. 
that's what I want to keep people from doing. That's the key. I mean, I think, you know, the whole idea of coaching is you have to wake up every day and say, how do I get my students success? How do I protect them? And how do I get them success? How do I get them their next deal? But to me, it's like this whole selling stuff is so easy. And, you know, I always tell students, you could do everything that I tell you to do and get no results. But what happens is if you took my top 100 students and you said, you know, what is the common thread? It's they have this attitude that like you and I were just talking about, they are going to make it happen or they are going to die trying. And I think once you make that switch that you don't need permission to take action, you don't need more education to take action. You know, if you give these people simple instruction, clear, simple instruction, and you give them small wins, right? Instead of not the deal is the win, but build your cash buyer list to 150 people first, then do this, then one channel, right? Step by step. I mean, I can't say as a coach that you can't fail, but it, I would be hard pressed for you to show me one student who made the decision that I'm going to make this happen or die trying that has not had success. I mean, it's, it's such a simple model. It's ridiculous. So I, I love it. And it's good stuff, man. It's really, it's like, you know, people are like, man, are you on drugs? I'm like, yeah. Like I was making like $55,000 a year. Like I was bankrupt. Like I am on the drug of like wholesaling. I, I love this stuff. It's so awesome, man. I mean, it's so powerful. I can't believe people wake up and do other things other than this. I mean, like <laughs> you your time. But and I'll tell you the other thing about wholesaling is, you know, we are just about now. And I can tell you, actually, I'll tell you exactly. We are at, um, I can tell you as of right now, November 27th, my wedding anniversary of 19 years, I can tell you that we are at exactly $944,000 and 83. That's what we're at right now in assignment. So we're going to break a million probably within the next week or two. Yeah. And brother, I haven't seen a house. I haven't met a seller. I don't know like anything about real estate. We, Julie and I just went on vacation. We're going on vacation again, just like you and Shelly. I mean, it's great, man. I, I love it. I love it. The business <laughs> totally runs itself. I have two people run it. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, just, <laughs> I need a passion project. I mean, this is great. So it's, you know, yeah, it's awesome. man, I, one thing I love that's infectious about what you do, right? And I think anybody listening right now can hear it. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it is passion. Right. Right. And I, and you said something earlier I want to allude to, because I mean, and you really hit the nail right on the head when you said when you, when, when your students and when people make the decision that right. they are going to fail or not or succeed or die trying. Right. Right. You know, it's the old Yoda do or do not. There is no try. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. The, you Hold know what? On. I always, and when we do Yoda, there, we always have to, like, there we go. <laughs> put on you know, the lightsaber. I love it. Yoda's quick with that thing, man. He's fast. Well, I, you know, I'll tell you this. I always use this analogy with a student because sometimes a student will call in and there's like, you know, you can tell they're struggling. Yeah. And I will always give this analogy as kind of a wake up call is, and I just had this happen recently and I'll say, do you have any children? So the, the guy I was speaking to, he said, yes, I have a daughter. And uh, I said, I want you to pretend like I just kidnapped your daughter and I'm the kidnapper. And I'm calling you and I'm telling you the ransom to get your daughter back is they get a house under contract at 40, 50 or 60 cents on the dollar based on the Zillow price. I don't even care. Just get a house under contract, right? I am telling you, if you put that seed in your brain and you really believed it, you would wake up at four o'clock in the morning. You would skip breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You'd have a contract in 24 hours. I don't care if you had the right contract paperwork, the right script. You would talk to every single person that you met. You wouldn't have a 65 inch television when you know you could convert that into postcard money for motivated sellers. I mean, that's the reality of what we're talking about. When you want it as bad as you want to get your kid back from a kidnapper, I am telling you, you will make it happen. It doesn't matter who your coach is. It doesn't, nothing matters. That's, and I think all of us who are at the top 1% in this industry, in all of real estate, I think that we've at some point, you know, for me, it was, I came home. We sold out. We sold out. Yeah. I sold out to the idea, right? Yes. Yeah. 
I mean, absolutely. I, I, I remember for me, I was sitting, I got, I was going into my uh, office. Uh, I was a financial advisor, right? Right. And I walk in and I had a meeting at 10 o'clock with my manager and right. I walked in at eight o'clock and you know, my sales were down and, and my heart kind of left the business. And once I walked in, I knew that the call had been made. I was chopped liver. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> and so I remember sitting in my office. I mean, like it's, honestly, I, I know exactly where I was at. I remember the feeling of being alone in my office, the four walls, and I'm wrestling with the idea, right? <laughs> and really, I always, I mean, I've told this lots of times on my podcast, but like, it's really this young kid, you know, when we were kids, we're pure, right? Like, right. And we, and we, when we imagined in our brain and dream, like anything was possible. Right. And somehow and it's in our adult lives, people start telling you, no, you can't. And right. the bad thing is we start to believe them. And so right. in that, in that room, I've got this young farm kid that used to dream and dream. He's like, put me in. I know what I want to do. Right? right. I want to do real estate. And then I got this 30 year old man saying, uh, you got a job, a wife, kids. And, and I was, I was wrestling with the idea of do I, or do I, do I not? Right. Right. And, but once I made the commitment and I honestly, I remember sitting, I made the most purest gut wrenching, honest, everything that I am commitment right there alone by myself. And I made it to me. Right. Brother is there's none of us. I mean, you, you know, so Corey and I are both in CG together, collective genius. There's very few people in that room that don't have a similar story. That. Yeah, that that's moment. What, that I think, and that's what uh, unites us all. Yes. Because we all have that story. Yeah, I to, I've heard it a hundred times from everyone in that room, and it's so true. I mean, for myself, same thing. Where I was. you? Sit, I was sitting in my office. They came in, district manager, vice president of sales, fired me. I was wearing my Tommy Bahama socks. I was, I was you know, not expecting it. Came home. Julie was a few weeks later, I came home after I came home and then I told her what happened. I was trying to find work. I came home a few weeks after that. She was uh, crying in the bathroom. She wasn't sure if she should uh, pay the mortgage or buy groceries. We had to claim bankruptcy and I was just done. And Todd told me to get started. I said, you know what? I'm going to trust. I think it takes, it takes three elements of belief to make it work. I had to trust Todd that he was where I wanted to be. Number two is I had to trust the program. I had to understand that people do sell it. Cause sometimes even if they trust me as a coach, they don't understand that whole homeowners do actually sell at a discount. It's like, Oh, that was a long time ago. It doesn't happen anymore. And then number three is you gotta, and this is the big one. You got to trust yourself. You got to believe in yourself that it's, it's not just for Bobby and Joey and Sally. It's for me too that I can do this. I'm capable, even though I got a 990 on my SAT, even though, you know, whatever problems at that time, I was like 250 pounds. Right. And I was, you know, I'm still overweight, but I had a huge weight problem. And I, you know, I, I think that you got to know that you can do it too. But once you have those three things and then you make that commitment that we're talking about, I would go so far as to say, you really can't fail. I don't see how you can fail if that's really where you're at. That that's how I feel about it. Now I, let me ask you this, cause this yeah. is my experience. Once I made that commitment and I really made it right. Everything in my life has shown up when I needed it. Brother, it's, I and literally had a God to... thing too. Right. But I mean, yeah. I, I'm just saying like, I mean, I sold out to the idea and then I breathed the life into it. What do you, what do you say to that? I literally, I totally agree. I totally, one of my favorite books that I also got when I first started, Todd took me to the Sean Terry, um, event in Atlanta. This was now years ago. And he paid for me the whole thing. I didn't have any money at all. I was, I was legitimately totally broke. So he paid for every single thing when I was there. It's where I met Nazar from CG, by the way, he and I started the same time. It was awesome. But, um, and a few other people. Um, but, but, um, what's interesting is that has always been true for me. When I made that decision, another book that was recommended at that event was the four spiritual laws of prosperity. Um, by Edwin Gaines. I would recommend every one of your listeners, if you want to make an immediate impact today, like I'm talking a massive immediate impact, read that book. And let me say another thing too. A lot of people, they were told, especially kids, probably like Corey, but also for sure for myself, um, they were told that they couldn't read, that they were a visual learner, an audio learner. That's all bull crap. I know now I'm, I'm good friends with 
the top people. I'm good friends with Robert Kiyosaki and the best people in the world. And I will tell you, I don't know one of these people who, you know, anyone who's worth more than I say a hundred million dollars. I don't know anyone over a hundred million dollars who doesn't read every single day. So no matter what people tell you, you get a physical book, commit to eight. That's what I did is I took, I would count out eight physical pages and put a little uh, sticky note and I would commit it eight pages a day. When you start exercising your brain, bro, I'm telling you, your life will change. But yeah, I agree. When you're open to it, everything comes into your life. I just recently, Robert was telling me the importance of gold. Um, Jason Medley told me to take four years and take four years into my long-term savings account of spending. Yep. I did that and I just we made a decision over the weekend on our way back from Baltimore that on Monday, this was last Monday, we were going to buy 20% of our long-term savings in gold and silver. What do you know that Sunday morning, my neighbor told me, hey, Tom, I've got almost, almost to the penny, 20% of gold in my, I want to sell literally did it. This is the craziest story, but this happens all the time. And instead of buying it where I would have had to pay what they call above spot, you have to pay like a premium. Yeah. I was able to buy a ton of gold, which was 20% of my savings, almost to the penny from my neighbor for with no extra charge, just for the current price of gold. I mean, this is the kind of wow. stuff that happens when you're intentional and you, you know, yes, you up. yes, that's exactly. Yeah. So that's where things happen into your life when you're intentional and you put it out there and man, the universe has a way of rewarding that. I mean, it really does. God has a way of rewarding that. Um, and I agree. It's it's amazing when you really, if you really to look back and think about like how it all came about, right? I even, right. I mean, I didn't even just look at my wife. I'm like, like my wife is exactly what I needed for me. Right. Right. right? My good and bad. She accepted me for who I am, but she's been a, an amazing part. I've been married for 17. So that's awesome. Man. If, if anybody doesn't know Shelly, you got to meet her. She's funny. Yeah. <laughs> she's awesome. <laughs> He's the leader. She's the leader. <laughs> that's but, awesome. I mean, but, but yeah, I mean all that stuff and, and really and we're, I mean, we're kind of, we're everywhere right now with what we're talking about, but I, I think that's life in yeah. general of like, how do you be successful? Cause you know, for me, like I graduated into multifamily. You don't have to do that. You can, um, you know, you can start right with multifamily, but Sometimes the su simplicity of wholesaling right. is magical. Yeah. Well, I mean, also to your credit, I will say that Todd now calls me every day and says, why don't you get in the multifamily, you blankety, blankety, blank, blank, blank. <laughs> hey, can I tell you? Uh, so Todd calls me and um, uh, he's like, dude, I found this deal. I found this deal. It's in Yuma. Okay. Did he tell you about the Yuma deal? I I think no, I think you told me about it at some point. Or I, I already had a... it under contract. Oh, that's funny. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but at but least you... he found it, right? Yeah, but there's that, there you go. That's how those things come together all the time. But yeah, Todd is uh he's been telling me. I mean, multifamily. You know, I've heard the argument now. Even you know, Robert Kiyosaki will tell you. You know, Ken, uh, Ken the rich dad advisor, Ken. Uh, uh, McElroy will, you know, you know, he's, he loves it. And you know, one deal and you're done one deal and you don't pay taxes anymore. I mean, everybody's told me all the golden magical stuff. I, I, I want to get into it. Well, and but, Hey, we will mean you, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll do, we got to do it together. Let's, right. Yeah. I mean, why not? Right. Let's do it. I love so, it. And the part of that is like this, I've always believed this, right? So like I just recently stopped wholesaling last year, I stopped wholesaling okay. up until then. I always had wholesale in my, my tool bucket. Right. 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 It was just within the last year and a half, I really said, I'm just going to primarily focus on um, just apartments, right? Gary but, Keller, the one thing. Yeah, but I've always felt like uh, wholesaling always was a great way to make quick income with not a whole lot of work. Well, I think that, uh, and I really honestly feel this way, that if you want to just produce a million dollars a year, that's totally hands off. And here's the key. A lot of people say, well, how do you scale? How do you grow? How do you want to, these are all big SAT words that mean nothing yes. to me. The bottom line is you have the number one first rule to have a business that is a servant to you instead of a job that you serve. The number one way to create that is to put a cap on your financial aspirations. As soon as you do that, if you say, I want to create a business that, that serves me with a million dollars a year that I am totally hands off. I think you can do that very easily with wholesaling. And I will tell you, people say, Oh, well, I don't do anything with my business. Just this and just that. I will tell you my whole business is run by one and a half people. I have nothing to do with, I mean, 
nothing. I do my coaching business and that's it. And that's how I want it. So people will say, well, you know, if you bring in this other channel or you, you, you know, expand your territory, you know, you could, and I'm like, no, it, you don't have to, if you're not happy with that much money, like you've got serious problems. Like yeah, it's, like it's yeah. not, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and so, and the, where I've transitioned is just this, my only little caveat to that is, and I agree. Right. So like, right. listen, you can do that every day of your life. And, um, that's a pretty successful, that's a real, not, that is a super successful, super successful career. Yeah. Anytime you go above 200 K in a year, you are now right. with like the 5% of people that really make money. Right. Right. I agree. And so anything above that is like a super blessing that you can, honestly, if you just live right, you can bless so many people with that. Um, yeah. The transition for me with the multifamily space was, um, I always think, like, how, why did I get into it? And my, my thought was like, well, um, it just, it fell in my lap. It was the right time in the right place. Right. And, um, and then I started doing it. And my only caveat is taxes, right? Well, yeah. So, so let me, let me say this. I think the key is, is people will say, well, you know, Tom, like, have you, because I believe that multifamily is like, it's very important for us as entrepreneurs. You know, Jim Rohn teaches us, we work to uh we you know we work to to live we don't work to rest right so yeah. i think that you have to be careful that you don't get stagnant and you don't you don't, you stop growing because if you want to be depressed make a lot of money and stop growing and you will you oh, know the bridge so i think for me i just went from co from wholesaling to coaching i think it would have been a very natural and i certainly have tons of students who have gone from wholesaling to multifamily so i think once you have a business that's a servant to you and now you can have the ability to have time you have to it's the purpose driven well, life. You choose, you get to choose what you want to do, right? You got to choose your yeah. next deal. Right. But, but, the, but this whole idea that we're going to put our feet in the sand and retire, I mean, this is not even true. We don't even want that. If you, I have so much energy. If I had my feet in the sand for more than two hours, I'd be, forget it. I can't do it. So I, yeah, I agree. You have to do something in multifamily is a very natural transition. Yeah. Uh, well, and for me too, it's just like, I love to work. Right. So like I enjoy right. even this podcast. I love podcasting. Right? Yeah. I, it's awesome. I, it's one of my favorite things to do because I meet great people like you. Awesome. And we just we have like it's synergy. It's fun. You actually right. just got me to stand up for the first time on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, dude. It's awesome, man. I'm sending you. I gotta get somebody to send you a stand up desk. It's good. Yeah, you're gonna love it. It's awesome. Yeah, we, <laughs> that's awesome. But good stuff. But yeah, yeah, I totally agree. You don't want to. This whole idea, you know, when I first got started in real estate, I said, oh, you know, I'm going to take all this cash and I'll buy free and clear rentals and then I'll live off the passive income. And, but I don't even want to do that. You know, my, my, I mean, I don't know anybody who is happy in like with money and nothing to do. You've got, you know, what are the, when the Bible says, right? The first two, the, what they asked Jesus, what are the most important commandments? He said to love God, love others. So if you're sitting all day there with like somebody fanning you with a feather eating grapes, you are going to be miserable in about two days. And it's, yes. yeah, so you gotta, you gotta give. And, and that's the way to do it is by your work. I, I totally agree. Totally agree. Listen, dude, what an amazing show, brother. I mean, I love, awesome. we just had great energy, great chemistry. Um, for anybody that wants that was would be interested in learning the wholesale business, and by the way, for everybody listening right now, I'm going to tell you if 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 I was to ever point you in the right direction of a company that has an education program, um, th this this hands down by far the only thing you should ever do, and you're going to listen to Tom Kroll right now because he's going to give you exactly where you need to go, and if you don't, you're an idiot. Bam! <laughs> thank you, brother. I'm honored to hear that from you, especially. So, so thank you, Corey. And I, I, I want to have you on the podcast, and we've got to do a project together. That is the next big thing. So we got to, we got to work on that because we got to do some stuff together. There's some synergy there. So we got to figure it. it. Let's out. do it. Why Let's not? do it. I'm done. I'm down. Awesome, man. Thank you for having me on the show. It's been awesome. Well, when I, well, you, you got to get. Tell me where. Tell everybody where to go. Right. Wholesaling Inc. So uh, if you guys want to hear more, we have a podcast. It's Wholesaling Inc. Wholesaling Inc. If you guys want to check us out online, it's Wholesaling 
wholesalinginc.com. We uh, have all the latest and greatest information about wholesaling, what's working right now, how to get your first deal. We cut through all the fat. There's no education. It's only instruction. We do not believe in education. We don't care what you think you know about wholesaling. We don't care what you want to know about wholesaling. We're going to tell you what to do, and you're going to do it, and that's the extent of our relationship. So it's, uh, it's, and it's a great, uh, it's, it's, it's really a great business. It's truly I believe the greatest business out there. So I, I love to share it with you. And if you guys want to hear more, check out the podcast and we'll, you know, we'll go from there. And the podcast is Wholesaling Inc. as well, right? Wholesaling Inc. Yep. Wholesaling Inc. Easy peasy. Is simple, simple, simple. Listen, guys, uh, you know, out of this episode, hopefully you've got some, some really great nuggets. Um, you've seen, uh, you know, Tom is the most genuine. Uh, you can hear it in his voice. He has passion. He loves what I what he does and you know and we picked on it today again it's you know i believe truly when you start to believe it in your mind it is the most powerful tool that we possess right yes and when you do that and engage it your paradise is possible you guys have a wonderful day thanks a lot listen to our show next week